Okay, let's go ahead and start the uh, next screencast, which is finding the present value and the future value via some simple equations. Uh, you're going to have all these equations. They'll be provided for you in your exam packet. You can find them on um, the back flap uh, or the front flap of your book, depending upon which version of the book you have. If they're not there, it's just because your book is uh, a former soft cover that somebody's put a hard cover on in order to boost its resale value. Uh, if you can't find it on the flaps, you can find all these equations for the present value and the future value of constant series, linear gradient series, and uh, um, exponential, uh, or sorry, geometric gradient series, all in a single table within your book, so don't worry about it. But we'll be starting with the constant series right here. And so what we have on this top line, and I'll show you how the equation works out, is just an equation that will give you the future value of a constant series of payments via the brute force method. Now to think about it, this is the deposit that's made in time period n that is just equal to whatever you deposited in there. So this is that $10 in time period 5. This next term right here is the deposit made in the time period before the last time period. In our problem, it's this $10, that's what the capital A is right there, being deposited in time period 4, which gets to grow by a little bit over a single time period. And then here's the time period before that, time period 3, all the way back to the deposit that you get in time period 1. This one gets to go ahead and grow by n less 1 time periods, to up to time period uh, 5, or n. And so this is a brute force calculation for finding the future value of a constant series of deposits. Now, below it is part of a trick in order to make it so that this ugly thing right here turns into something which is quite lovely, which we have down here on the bottom. And you probably learned this in your second term calc class when you're dealing with sequences and series. What you do is you multiply both sides of this equation by 1 plus i. And so the f gets multiplied by 1 plus i. The a gets multiplied by 1 plus i to become a times 1 plus i. The a times 1 plus i gets multiplied by 1 plus i to become a to the one uh, times 1 plus i squared, and so on down the line. So what you have is uh, two very similar equations. Then what you do is you end up taking the difference between the two. And so what I've done, I've taken this right here which is a little bit larger, and subtracted the upper one. And so it's the lower equation less the upper equation. So on the right-hand side, we simply have f times 1 plus i less the f right here. And then what happens is kind of a, an orgy of cancellation. You have this term right here in the uh, uh, lower equation, and you're subtracting the upper equation. So you find its mate, and those guys will cancel each other out. And these two will cancel each other out, and so on down the line. It turns out that there's only two terms that don't cancel each other out. This term right here, and this term right here. So what you have in the denominator is just a times 1 plus i to the n, this term right here, less a, which is right up there. You can do some rearranging of this, solving it out for just the future value. And what you end up with is finding that the future value is equal to a times <coughs> 1 plus i to the n less 1 on i. Well, there we go. If you go ahead and make that calculation, 10 times 1 plus i to the period of uh, power of 5 less 1 on the interest rate again, you find out that the future value that you calculate is $61.05, which is exactly what we had before. So this is just a simple explanation about where that constant series equation comes from. Again, you'll be given the equation, so there's no need to memorize them. you just got to need to learn how to use them. It's also a good time to practice these out on your calculator. Uh, an amazing number of people cannot manipulate their calculator in a consistent way. And so I highly recommend pounding through a couple of these uh, far before the exam, just to make sure you end up with some kind of reasonable numbers. Um, and reasonable um, is uh, something that you need to develop a, a habit for being able to evaluate. Um, if you can look at a number and know that it is stupid looking, you've made a fabulous step. And we'll do some of these in class just to make sure that you guys have a good feel for reasonable and sort out what's going on. Usually it's simply some kind of things that have to do with parentheses with your calculator, which are oftentimes hard to spot if you're dealing with a rather small display like that. 
So the uh, next uh, screencast is going to be uh, learning a little bit about factor notation, which is going to be a shorthand, and as well as being able to use some of the tables that are in the back of the book. The tables allow you to make a lot of these calculations with a calculator that doesn't have a power on it, so you can actually use a gas station calculator. And in some circumstances, it's a little bit faster.